There's a new benchmark set for Alzheimer's detection. The FDA approving a first-of-its-kind blood test that could make for faster and more accurate diagnoses. And the breakthrough coming as data shows more than one in nine seniors will be diagnosed in the next 25 years. And Dr. Nicole Sapphire, Fox News contributor, joins us here. Great to have you. So I just want to show some statistics there that I mentioned. One in nine people, that's 11% of people age 65 and older, that's 7.2 million Americans. That would be 82 million by 2050. So this kind of a blood test seemed to me like it was pretty exciting. That's right, Dana. This is great news in the Alzheimer's world. The FDA has just approved a new blood test to look for the presence of amyloid plaques in the brain. Now, this is different from existing blood tests on the market in the sense that existing blood tests were meant to be used in conjunction with PET scanning or spinal taps. This blood test is saying that it may just need the blood test alone to be able to have early detection of Alzheimer's, foregoing the PET scan, the spinal taps that are, that are invasive and also expensive. Now, this was a multicentric trial. They looked at 499 plasma samples. And what they found, Dana, is if they were found to have a positive ratio, 92% of those patients also had evidence of the amyloid plaques, whether on the PET scan or in looking at the spinal fluid. And in those that had a negative ratio, 97% of those patients had no evidence. What this means is that it had a very high positive predictive value, meaning if it was positive, there's a good likelihood that there are amyloid plaques and there is Alzheimer's disease. It also had a very good negative predictive value, which means that if it was negative, there's a very high likelihood that there's no evidence of disease. Now, it's very crucial for these early detections of Alzheimer's because there are also FDA-approved treatments that when you have early intervention and treatments, it's not going to prevent the disease from forming, but it can slow the progression. And this can increase the quality of life in these patients, not mm -hmm. just for the patients, but for their family members and their caregivers. Right, so earlier detection and earlier treatment. Also wanted to ask you about this. There's an incredible number of whooping cough, whooping cough cases in Hawaii, mm -hmm. 108 as of May 15th. Um, the symptoms can be a runny or stuffy nose, low-grade fever, mild occasional coughs. Babies may struggle to breathe. This is a big deal. It is in Hawaii, but as we know, these things don't stay contained necessarily. What should people know about this? Well, first of all, Dana, let's not panic. Whooping cough is tried and true. It's, it's very common. It's been around. It's here every single year. We are seeing a rise in cases. Even here in the Northeast, we've seen a rise in cases. Um, it is caused by a bacterial infection. It is um, the highest risk for this respiratory illness is in kids. Um, my son actually had whooping cough this spring, and he was vaccinated. He was boosted, um, and he thankfully only had a mild course. But this is what we call the 100-day cough. So it comes with a very severe cough cough that, lost, that lasts a very long time. And so we are seeing whooping cough as we head into the summer and fall months. We may be seeing more cases on the rise. There is a vaccine. It's the Tdapt, but it does wane. Within a couple of years, the efficacy of preventing illness wanes significantly. So that is why they do recommend boosters, especially mm -hmm. if you are in a community with high levels of whooping cough. It reminds me, I have just flashed into uh, to a memory of my sister used to get it very badly. And I remember being... Um, because I was young too, I had to be in the bathroom with the hot water running and her in the bath and this horrible cough and my mom being yes. very upset and so it can be upsetting. Um, any reason it spreads more in the summer or is that not the case? It's just a summer strain is happening now. We do just see it a little bit more, and it is probably because kids are congregating indoors in um, air conditioning, and mm. it, if there's an infective individual there, then that is probably why um, you're going to see it. Dana, I just want to go back to the Alzheimer's blood test sure. one second, because this is very important. This blood test is not meant for everyone. It is not like when we recommend a mammogram or a colonoscopy screening that everyone should be getting this just to see if they have Alzheimer's disease. What this is being approved for is those 55 and older who have evidence of dementia dementia already, memory loss, and this is a way to help them diagnose Alzheimer's. Everyone should not be going out and getting this because it could introduce psychological harm if it's positive and there's no evidence of disease. Mm -hmm. So all we can do is our best to live as healthy as possible, doing things that keep our brain healthy, eating healthy, omega-3s, certain supplements, exercise, sleep, social interaction, all these things to keep our brains as healthy as possible. And to do possible. those puzzles. That's a great reminder. I'm glad you went back to that. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Sapphire. See you soon.
Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.